Hi everyone, this lecture will assist you in forming your annotated bibliographies for this course. You will get a brief overview of what annotated bibliographies are, what they consist of, and some tips on the best ways to complete them. So what are they? We borrow the term from a combination of Greek and Latin. Bibliography comes from Greek and translates to book writing. We know this is a list of books, or to modernize one more step, a list of materials that could include books, articles, films, etc. Annotate comes from Latin and translates to to add notes to. Put them together and you have a list of books, or research materials in this case, with notes on each. There are three major parts of an annotated bibliography. These elements include citations, your standard stylized citation, most likely MLA or APA for undergraduate work, and then the annotations themselves. Your annotations will include a summary of one to two lines that gives the broad strokes of what your cited source is all about, and in the meat of your annotations are the evaluative elements. This is where you will talk about specific elements of the selected sources and how each one ties to your research endeavor. So in summation, each annotation is both descriptive and evaluative. Descriptive in that they provide a summary of each source, and evaluative in that they explore and explain different aspects of the source's content. To evaluate sources, one useful method is to apply the crack test. This is where you will write about specific elements of each source. Those elements include currency, reliability, authority, and purpose and or point of view. The first element, currency, refers to how recent the information you're analyzing is. You want to be sure that the information you are using is current enough for your topic. There are plenty of cases, however, when currency isn't as impactful, such as using historical documents or historical information. The main thing here is to be sure that if the date of publication is impactful to your research topic, it should be noted in your annotation. Reliability. This section will be helped by asking yourself several questions about each of your chosen sources. What kind of information is included in your selected source? Factual information that is backed up by references and other sources of data? Is the content primarily opinion or commentary? If so, you will want to note that and explain the usefulness of including such a source to your research endeavor. What does that particular voice illuminate about your topic? Is the information presented done so in a balanced way? If arguments are included about the main ideas of the source, is equal time given to each side of the arguments? And one of the key aspects of evaluating for reliability is looking out for references, sources of data, and quotations. Are these provided in a viable way? Can any references used be tracked down in a quick and efficient way? Authority refers to the ultimate creator and or distributor of the information presented in your selected sources. So this will require you to address such questions as who is the creator or author? What are that person's credentials? Advanced degrees relevant to the content of the article? Do they have a lot of experience researching and writing about the topics discussed in the source? What makes them an authority on the topics at hand? You may also want to consider evaluating the publisher or distributor or sponsor of the information. Are those publishers or sponsors reputable? Try to think about what interest, if any, the publisher or sponsor has in disseminating the information displayed in the source. Purpose and or point of view. Is the source based in fact or opinion? Is the creator or author trying to sell you something? This could be a product or even a set of ideas that they could be selling. Are they using the information presented to convince you of anything? If so, what? Does the source exude obvious bias? What is the overall purpose of publishing the information presented? One thing that you will see consistently when reading scholarly research articles are sections of acknowledgments and or conflicts of interest. These sections within scholarly work can help you with analyzing reliability, purpose and point of view, and potential biases within the presented research. This concept was illustrated in the guide on the side activity where you track down the research article mentioned in a USA Today article that posited that men who take a large amount of selfies may be psychopaths. So we'll review that again very briefly. Like with the example about the selfie takers being psychopaths, once we track down the actual research article we realize that the study was really looking at traits of possible psychotic tendencies, like narcissism. And as we scrolled down we found a section titled Acknowledgements. Within that section, we learned that the data that was used even in the original research study was gathered by way of a Glamour magazine survey 
which could call into question its reliability as a research method. So look for sections within your own articles with the headings of conflicts of interest or acknowledgments or funding or some other variation of those three to find out interesting notes about the funding of the research performed or about the methods of data collection. To summarize then, each annotation will include your source's citation directly followed by the annotation, which are usually no more than 150 words each in a single paragraph. Annotations consist of a summary of the material, one to two sentences, and then one to two sentences for each evaluative element relevant to the material being evaluated, usually four to eight sentences in total. And then the final portion of the annotation, one to two sentences, should focus on explaining how the material contributes specifically to your research. What specific things are you learning from this paper that is going to directly correlate with your research endeavor? I hope this helps with forming your annotated bibliographies. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to email me directly at applingm at mailbox.sc.edu or send your questions through your instructor. Thanks.